The sleepy, idyllic town of Mistress Glen is home to a predator. A beast walks the outskirts, silent yet deadly. Who will fall prey to its nightmare stench? This is Mysteries of the Verdant Valley. Okay, you guys, welcome back to another episode of Mysteries of the Verdant Valley. I'm Bud. And I'm Herb. Listen, we gotta be real quiet here. Yep. We gotta bring everybody up to speed, okay? You ready? Yeah, yeah. So, from our last episode, where we left off, we were at the jail. We got out of jail with the help of our good friends, Pickle and, and Daryl. Daryl's here. It's Daryl. Daryl, remember? Okay, Darryl. yes. Daryl. Yeah, and then we went and got to Gertie's house, yeah. right? Gertie basically helped us figure out how we're going to find Theo, okay? But then we had to find Grandar. Yeah. Gosh, this is complicated, you guys. We went to his house, and what did we find her? Well, <laughs> Grandar, let me just say, is quite the investigator. He has been mapping out and systematically crawling through the cinder wood. Talk about burying the lead, man. He knew all kinds of crap about the cinder wood walker he did not disclose to us. His board with the red string, and he had a ton of notes that we really couldn't understand. But it was clear, based on the fact that when we got into his closet, and he had a ton of weapons, there's more to Grandar that beats the eye. He's basically a vigilante. He must be. That or, you know, he's just faster at investigating than we are. Oh, yeah, I guess it could be that. He's pretty smart. Anyways, it was very clear, though, that somebody got to him first. And that's not good news for us. No, and very bad news for Grandar. Folks out there, y'all can't see this. So, Herb, let's set the scene. First of all, we got our good friend Daryl here. And our friend Gertie is joining us as well. Say hi, Gertie. Oh, sorry. I was I was concentrating on our friend Grandor. Hi, hi, everyone. I do appreciate the uh, the dramatics here, of course. We do need to keep it quiet, though. There oh, is. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Keep it yeah. down. Pipe down. Shush. Shush. While we were at Grandor's house, we found a map laid out on the kitchen table with an X drawn on this very spot. Since he weren't at home, we figured this was as good a place as any to start. So we came out here to the cinder wood, and what did we find? It's Grandar. He's right over there, you guys, just on the other side of this grassy knoll. And we can see, uh, who is that? It looks like it's... Oh, no. Oh, no. It's those mother shepherds who were gonna eat Herb. I know. I hate these guys. Oh, man, they've got Grandar in shackles. In that moment, you hear the crunching of footsteps through the cinderwood, and some of the brush peels back to reveal Deputy Richard Dickinson approaching with three crumbled pieces of puffy cloth. He approaches and addresses the two guards, and he says, Hey! You fucks! Words come down from the sheriff. We're supposed to wear these for the rest of the night. What? <laughs> really? I mean, uh, this appears to be uh, a diaper. <laughs> you want us to put diapers on over our clothes? <laughs> That's rather odd. No, oh, you fucking idiots! You need to wear it on your face. <laughs> wear it on our face, Quill. Oh, this must be a prank. You can't possibly be real. No, 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 no. We will not be doing anything of the sort. Look, you chuckle fucks. Are you working for the sheriff or not? You've already been chewed out once tonight. Do you want me to rip you a third asshole? Uh, no, no, of, of course not, no. Um, I'm sorry. Is, is, is this correct? You see all three of them take a diaper, flip it inside out, and place it over their head like a helmet, covering their nose and mouth, leaving their eyes open. Look, I'm not into kink shaming, but this is fucked up, man. To each their own, but this is, this is a bit much. Yeah, let's go shame them. Okay. Wait a minute, let's think about this for a second. So they're putting dirty diapers on their face yeah. so that there's already smelling something really bad. 
right? So they're used to some bad stink. So that way, if the Cinderwood Walker shows up and starts letting that butt whipping loose, then that's not going to affect them because they're already smelling the stinky... I don't know, does that... That no, checks that, out. It does? These diapers actually do smell a little nice. What should we do with the prisoners, sir? Huh? You twos aren't doing shit with no prisoner. I'm gonna take it from here. Wait, 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 wait a minute. You you don't want us to take him back to the jail? Stop standing around with your dicks in your hands and go back on control. We're looking for those goddamn escapees. Okay, I suppose. <laughs> but, but wait, uh, do we need to keep these diapers on our heads? Yes. Look, no matter what you do, do not take them off. No matter what you see, no matter what you hear, and no matter what you smell. The diapers are not to leave your stupid faces. You hear me? I mean, it is a rather odd fashion statement, but I suppose... Well, deputy, (laughs) here's your prisoner. (laughs) They lift Grandar up from his knees and (laughs) shove him bodily towards Deputy Dickinson. (laughs) What's the plan here? I think we need a distraction. You see that Deputy Dickinson is leading Grandar away from y'all while the two guards are coming nearer and nearer to your hiding spot in the woods. All right, bud. Should we relieve them of their diapers? Oh. Yes. Okay. They seem prepared. So we should prepare as well. You know I like a good plan. You do like a good plan. Oh, man. I can't get past putting a dirty diaper on my face, but I, I guess so. I could do a little something to maybe make them a little more indifferent towards us so we could take the diapers. I, as they get closer to us, would like to cast calm emotions on the two guards approaching. So you see this little ball of light begin to grow in Gertie's hand. And then with a... She blows it. It encircles them in kind of a gossamer sheen in a 20-foot sphere around the guards. By calming their emotions, she wants to just make them feel a little more indifferent towards us rather than hostile so we can get our way. (laughs) They roll a seven and a two, and your blossoming spell is spotted through the forest by Deputy Dickinson and Grandar off in the distance. But these two go, Oh my, Quill, these are the people we were looking for. We were just talking about them. We were literally just talking about them. Uh, We could not be more excited to see you all. Oh, this is amazing. This is amazing. Maybe we can have our turtle pie after all. Hello, hello, everyone. Deputy Dickinson has seen that, and in your ear, Grandar goes, Let's pick up the pace, you vegan lump. And he is, like, (laughs) trying to tug at you. You are manacled. You don't have any of your stuff with you, Grandar. But you are also significantly larger and, you think, much more powerful than Mm -hmm. Deputy Dickinson. Watch it. Is there anything that you're doing as he, like, drags you along? I'm definitely trying to slow the process down. So as he's dragging me, I'm I'm being as uncooperative as possible. Roll me a strength check. (laughs) That's a nat one though. Oh Oh, no! Yay! Deputy Dickinson (laughs) has a strength of negative one and rolled a three. So as weak as he is, he is dragging you along. And I think what this turns into is sort of like a terrible stumble, fumble forward. Yeah, You're trying to pull on him, he's pulling on you, and y'all are just derping your way further into the forest (laughs) away from the party. Yeah. Back to the rest of the party, you're here with these two very chill guys. If you want to get the diapers, I'm going to go try to head off Grandar and the dick cheese. Yeah, good thinking, Herb. Hey there, fellas. You're looking really, uh, you look great today, I think. Oh, really? I wasn't sure (laughs) I could pull off this look. But, hmm, now that you say that, I do feel a little more confident. (laughs) Well, I mean, it doesn't look that good, so just calm down. Oh, I I do feel quite calm. I'm 
wondering if we should show them, because seeing is believing, bud, just how good they look, if you wouldn't mind, gentlemen. Gertie will hold out her hand to see if maybe they'll share their newfound masks with us. Certainly. I couldn't imagine this possibly looking good on anyone. <laughs> Although I was starting to feel it a little. <laughs> but here, <laughs> try it. See if you... <laughs> I mean, honestly, you have no chance of pulling it off. And he will pull off a diaper and hand it to you, Gertie. It's quite clean, um, and it's it smells faintly of baby powder. Why are you guys wearing diapers on your faces? We were ordered to, but... Obviously didn't want to. Hmm, okay. And I guess if you were ordered to jump off a bridge, you just do that too, huh? Uh, why did you run away from our lovely time we were sharing back at the jail? Oh, yes, Spiff. I thought that we were forming a rapport. A rapport? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. In fact, we were hoping we could get your recipes for some other sentient creatures. Perhaps uh, you would like to come back with us because <laughs> we were in quite a lot of trouble with our superiors. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we wouldn't mind saving a little face and saving other bits as well. Oh, well, th the interesting thing is we talked to the sheriff and he actually said, oh, you know what? All the charges are dropped and I just need to let y'all go. <laughs> I can't say I'm surprised as odd as the sheriff has been acting tonight. I am inclined to believe you <laughs> and let it go at that. Herb, you're chasing off after Deputy Dickinson and Grandar, who are stumbling faintly further into the wood. I run ahead and I block their path and I make myself as big as possible. I mean, I'm pretty big, but I make myself look as big as possible. And I look down at Deputy Dick Cheese. Hey, listen, man, I don't want any trouble here, all right, all right? Well, <laughs> you've already learned once today that nobody messes with my buddies. Do you want to learn that lesson a second time? Roll an intimidation check. Ooh. Ooh. With advantage, because he's already inclined to be intimidated by you. Okay. Uh-oh. Five. <laughs> <laughs> you see the deputy, who is quivering a little bit, steal himself, whispers a little bit to himself, and he says, All right, come on, Dickinson. Get it together. You're brave. You're strong. You're powerful. You got this. And he like puffs his chest up and he says, No, I have orders to bring this vegan half-orc freak to Sheriff Thorn, and I am not letting him down again. Too friggin' bad. And I'm gonna try to push him. <laughs> Roll an athletics check. Eight. <laughs> you shove him and he stumbles back over a protruding root falls backwards and then somehow in the fall stumbles back up onto his feet still with one hand on Grandar and he just goes Hip! and then starts running in a lateral direction dragging Grandar behind him. So he's going off into the woods now at an, at an odd angle. We're gonna cut back. We've got these two guards. One of them still is bediapered around his head. Gertie has one of the diapers. <laughs> Daryl, is seeing the two guards distracted by conversation, is gonna try and sneak up the, the still bediapered one and just stealthily try and take the diaper off without him noticing somehow. Roll me a stealth check. I have advantage on these, because my boots. Ooh, that's a natural 20! Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> For 27. <laughs> Spiff is so calm that he, not only does he not notice you there, he doesn't notice the, the diaper coming off and you time it like perfectly with his low languorous blinking that you just slip it off his head. He thinks he's still wearing the diaper. I pocket it. You have one Blast Fours diaper 
in your inventory. Still got it. The other one is looking to see how it looks on you, Gertie. I'm modeling it and I'm giving some different angles. And then after just a minute, I'm going to say, well, dears, why don't you head on back into town? It's a little bit safer there. We have some errands to run. And how about we'll just pop back and meet you there later? Okay, ta-ta. And it's just going to start very confidently marching where Herb ran off towards Grandar, still sporting that diaper. I will say, Quill, part of me feels like this is entirely counter to our whole liaison that's why here in the woods. <laughs> but part of me can't bring myself to care. <laughs> and they will stand <laughs> indifferently as you march away. Wow, Gertie, you play those morons like a fiddle in a hoe dam. You know what? I- I- I'm really sorry for accusing you of being a cannibal and eating little Theo. Thank you, bud. I am so happy. It is water under the bridge between us at last. So leaving Spiff and Quill in the dust, you are able very quickly to catch up to Herb, who is, I assume, chasing after Grandar and Dickinson. Mm -hmm. He's actually trying to lose y'all. He has Grandar in his grasp, so he has disadvantage, but anyone, actually, no, those were terrible, terrible rolls. He's trying to lose y'all, and in the process, he is making the loudest possible trail through the cinderwood you could possibly imagine. There's just like cracking branches and grunts and screams as he drags Grandar behind him. I'm running for him, and if I can try to grab Grandar's ankle or something. And I'd love to help try to trip him, make it more awkward. You easily snag Grandar. The question is, how are you stopping Dickinson? So go ahead and roll me that athletics check with advantage. Okay. Okay. 21. Yes. All right. You grab onto Grandar's leg, easily snatching him away from the deputy who stumbles forward and clonks his head on a tree. Ugh. Whoa, ow, 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 ow. He falls to the floor and holds his head, uh, which is also still covered in a diaper. Please, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. I'm just following orders, man. Come on. Why would I kill you? Because you're carrying around a giant ass meat tenderizer and you're making it seem like you're going to hurt me again. I don't want to hurt you, but like you were hurting my buddies. And when people hurt my buddies, it just get a little bad. Wait a minute. Why do you have a diaper on your face? It's part of the new fall fashions. Something real important. We're running... We're running a new civic fall fashion line. That's it. That's it. A new civic fashion line. You know how they do with the firefighter calendars and whatnot. We're gonna make we're gonna make a public servant wearing various clothes on their heads. Calendar. We're gonna be raising a lot of money for charity to help with that boy who went missing. Yes, that's what it's about. I think you were only telling the truth when you said it was for something to do with you. And to be completely honest, I'm still a little mad that you were going to charge me with his disappearance. So, sir, I would like you to tell me where exactly you are trying to take Grandar, and maybe I won't step on your face again. Tell him, Herb. Please, please don't step on my face. I'm trying to date right now. I'm trying to look up for the ladies, you know? I hate to break it to you, Dick Cheese. But the ladies aren't going to be into you, no matter what your face looks like. No, 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 no. Please, please, please. I was taking him to meet the sheriff in the blight route. Please, I swear. Why did he want me there? Come on, man. I don't know. I don't know shit. I don't know anything. I don't know what he wants with you. I was just instructed to bring you in the blight route. At the blight route? I will point out here, he did not say at the blight route. <laughs> he did say in the blight route. What the hell? What does that mean? I know what it means. Key, please. He offers the keys to Grandar's manacles. Thank you. Grandar undoes his manacles. Hand over the diaper and scoot on back to the sheriff's department where you're going to hand in your resignation because you have not been protecting this community. You don't have any authority to strip me of my title. I worked really hard to be deputy of this town. Come on. No, you didn't. Look, Dicksack, are you aware that your sheriff, the man that you work for, is somehow involved with Theo's abduction? That is broad hearsay 
and slander. I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt here, man. I mean, I'm pretty sure you're as rotten as a goblin's toenail collection. But maybe, just maybe you didn't know your boss was as crooked as a snake. That is untrue, unfounded, and you ain't got no evidence. No evidence? Okay, how about that trail of slime he leaves behind? I didn't realize that blind loyalty was a part of your job description. Deputy Dickinson stands very sheepishly and is backing away to leave, and he's holding on to the diaper on his head, and he's very reluctant to take it off, and he goes, Come on, man, do you really need my diaper? I mean, can't I just have my diaper, please? Why, you gonna shit yourself? Assuming that that hasn't happened already? Maybe. What is the deal with the diapers? It, uh, it protects our identities in the night. Mm-hmm. If you don't tell us the truth right this minute, you will need a diaper. Roll an intimidation check with advantage. Okay, right. <laughs> Fantastic. That is a 22. Oh, nice. His voice is slowly getting higher and higher through this whole exchange. And finally, he just lets out a little, like, beaker, like, beep, and he flings the diaper out at you and goes, I don't know, I don't know. I'm telling you, I don't know. And he runs as fast as his little legs will take him out and away in the direction of town and in the direction of the sheriff's office to turn in his resignation. And now, a word from our sponsor. Discover the world of Tales of the Gallant action figures. Chad Jaunch, Beastborn Warlord. Look out, team! Here comes Verdant Loki! Benny Tingle, Gnome Sia. Oh no! Fine Strike and Shadow Spore are here too! R081T, Astral Mech Monk. These cock knockers have got us surrounded. Old Toby, hyper intelligent bugbear ranger. Don't worry, Chad. We'll send Verdant Loki back to the stinking hellscapes where he belongs. Verdant Loki. I'll drink your blood and feast upon your intestines, Gallant Four. Vine Strike. I'd like to wear your skin like a cape. Shadow Spore. I've killed before and I'll kill again. What are you going to do about it? You're no match for the Gallant Four. Good prevails again. Until next time, heroes. Can our heroes defeat Verdant Loki and his evil minions? It's up to you. Collect all the Tales of the Gallant action figures, each sold separately, available at all leading toy stores. Collect them all today. Arcane batteries not included. You all are now by yourself with a, a freed Garandar, who I, I will note has none of his stuff with him, and you have three diapers <laughs> ferreted amongst you. Gertie is still very much wearing hers. Looking good, Gert. Kind of into it. Thank you, darling. Uh, it's this season's caftan. Grandar, darling, are you hurt? They were a little rough, but I... I feel okay, thank you. You are true friends. True friends. You would be even better friends if you had brought a, a set of leathers and, and a bow and a sword. Oh, well, we didn't know that you were going to be all shackled up out here. Otherwise, we would have. Do you have any idea where your stuff is? No, they took it and ran. But I do have more equipment back at my place. Grodart, just to be level with you here, buddy. We saw your closet. Yeah. We're just wondering, where did you get all that cool ass shit? Well, since you are my true friends that have rescued me from a sticky spot, I will tell you that there was a time when your friend Grandar Posnef was an adventurer. It was a it was a misguided time in my youth. Uh, did a lot of things I wasn't proud of tried to bury it far back of my brain, but also the far back of my closet. And so that's what you found. So you're a closeted vigilante, is what you're saying? Well, I, I mean, it's been it's been years and years, but as the two of you probably know, it, it's like riding a bicycle. Not for me, it ain't. Okay, well, anyway, 
time is of the essence, and also it's, um... I'll come clean, all right? I definitely stole some shit from the closet. I know we just met, and normally I, I keep this kind of stuff to myself, but this seems like a serious situation here. And I just start <laughs> unloading <laughs> all kinds of gear. I like the cut of your jib. You know, you really are living up to the title of Master Thief. That's just incredible. It's just incredible. Thank you. I won't disagree with you. Yeah, whatever, man. I thought about stealing Grandar's stuff, but I have too much respect for him as a friend. Would it help if I perhaps listened in to the scene as it's unfolding in the Blight Root right now so we have a sense of what we're wandering into? Yeah, I mean, I'm still grappling with using the word in to refer to Blight Root, so yeah, uh, uh, getting an eye on it would be helpful. I have two options. I can either get an eye on it or I can get an ear on it. Which would you prefer? Well, it seems like Grondor has some information, so maybe based on what he knows, we could choose. It can be quick. With my investigation, I've discovered that, uh, well, a few things. Number one, the Cinder Woodwalker is not a mindless beast. It moves with a purpose. It has an objective, which I was still working on. It is an intelligent creature, perhaps even as intelligent as we are. Oh, oh my God, that's mm. terrifying. This is so exciting, but t- scary. Sorry, it's very scary. Yes, number two, the Blight Root is the source of its power. It does travel, but it needs to get back to the Blight Root periodically. Like for a recharge. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, it, th- the third part is really going to blow your minds. Are you ready? There are tunnels deep deep underground. So the rot that we discovered, layers and layers of soil deep, it just keeps going and going. And that is how the Cinder Woodwalker can get from place to place without people knowing about it. The vision! I sensed we were underground. There were roots hanging down and it just had a feel of a dank old cellar. The bit of time I spent in there, this is all lining up. Wait, we've been in these tunnels. We got lost in them trying to escape the vault at Castle Dinglehopper. Okay, so in the Blight Root would mean that the sheriff is waiting somewhere for us in one of these tunnels. That's my guess. It seemed pretty urgent, right? With the vision and all. Gertie, this looking in upon, is that something you can do quickly? I can do it right now, but we have to decide. Listening or watching? Gosh. I, I, I was going to go listening. Just I, I feel like at this point we need to hear what they're saying. Okay. Let's do it. Gertie is going to pull a small vial from her pack. And in this vial is a potion of clairvoyance, which will allow her to cast the clairvoyance spell and listen in. I had to choose between seeing or hearing for 10 minutes. So you're creating this invisible sensor in a location familiar to you, a place you've visited or seen before. Are you trying to put it where you saw the vision? Are you trying to put it at the blight root? I feel like I would be putting it where I had the vision. Homing beacon back on that to get more information since when we tried the scry, I was snapped too soon. Here's the trippy part about this. You don't know where or when in time the vision was. What you are about to hear is happening right now, this very moment. The first thing you hear is a whisper at a low tone, matched by another a few steps above that, and a third a few steps above that, this tritone whisper. You can hear the movement and shuffling of something large and wet. It seems to be scrubbing against tree roots and earth as it moves and shuffles forward. And then, after that enormous thing passes, you start to hear voices. Well, I'm just not sure we're still able to do both tonight, right? 
I would urge caution, because while we have everyone distracted, is there really a reason to go in on that already? Everyone's already at the fundraiser. They're not gonna know what's happening over here. You have such a small mind, Thorn. You have no idea the preparation that has gone into this moment. We have more than one goal that we will achieve. It is not simply enough to take the boy's mind and soul. We must also distract the populace enough so that we can further our intentions with the town. And they, of course, can never suspect me. That is the key. An attack on the fundraiser, that will divert all suspicion, especially if I'm there and present. Then no one will ever know that I was involved at all. In fact, I could potentially position myself as the savior of Mistress Glen. And then we will be ever closer to our goal. Right, 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 of course. My apologies, Blythe Walden. How else can I be of service? Well, when it all comes down to it, those meddlers are gonna be on their way. And they're going to need some kind of taxi. So, I want you to take care of things here. And of course, I know that they'll be coming for you, because if they don't, the boy is doomed. Oh, <laughs> oh that's bloody brilliant. They have to choose between the viper's nest and the cow's udders. Either way, we're milking them teats dry. Leave the higher levels of thinking to us, Thorn. Just shut up and do your job. And soon he will be manifest before us. Oh yes, yes he will. And soon at that, in his name, I will carry out your orders, Blind Warden. Forever bloom the flowering death. Very well. You know, Thorn, this likely means you won't be coming out of this. Not in this life, but in the unlife. In the unlife, I will return, remade, for his glory. That's the spirit. And you hear these figures moving away from your sensor in opposite directions until there is nothing but dripping and the slight damp movement of earth. Does Gertie recognize both of these voices, Thorn and... The mayor. One thousand percent. Very recognizable voices. Gertie comes back out of her vision, (gasps) gasping for air, and just locks eyes with each of you. Whoa, what happened? It is both what we thought and somehow also far, far worse. Do some of these things, do they ring a bell? The flowering death? The idea of the unlife? I mean, is this... Mm-mm. No. No? Okay. We've seen some undead before. We've murderized a lot of undead randos before, but this is so weird. Okay, okay. So this is another level. People don't necessarily look forward to being undead, do they? I mean, I guess, unless you're like a lich or something. Well, Gertie, what about Theo? Was Theo there too? I did not hear Theo. Oh, man. Did they move him? Is he gone? Being quiet? You said you heard sounds of wet slopping. Wet squelching is actually how I would describe it. Oh, give us some sound effects like... Yikes. All right, we don't need that. So are we assuming that's the Cinderwood Walker here? Them whisperings, that was the walker for sure, man. Yeah. We'd best be on our way, yeah? To the Blight Root? We're going to try to get inside the Blight Root? It sounds like they're expecting us or some part yeah, of us, right? At least right. Thorn is. Don't want to walk into a trap. Look, I'm terrified for Theo, but I'm also scared because they said they were going to do something bad to the fundraiser. Oh, man. Rosie and Dougie are going to be there. I know. Oh, Pickle. Pickle's going to go. Do you think Pickle could handle this on their own? No. Highly unlikely. Hell no. Grandar, how close are we to the Blight Route? We're very, very close. We just need to find one of those entrances. Yeah, we gotta hit that first. If we're fast, maybe we can help both. Yeah. Exactly. Let's go. (laughs) 
The Adventures of Bud and Herb is brought to you by The Pocket Dimension, greeted by Anna Fitzgerald and Evan Bivens. Episode 6, Into the Cinderwood, stars Evan Bivens as Kriglinexer Flump, Bud, Budlicker, and Sheriff Thorne. Anna Fitzgerald as Herb and Deputy Richard Dickinson. Seth McKay as Daryl Zorin and Spiff the Guard. Matthew Bivens as Grondar Posneff and Quill the Guard. Allison Kendrick as Gertie McGillicuddy and Alejandro Tay as the Dungeon Master. Produced and edited by Anna Fitzgerald, Evan Bivens, Matthew Bivens, and Allison Kendrick. Sound design by Evan Bivens. Original character art and poster by Bridget Connell. Special thanks to Alejandro Tay and Greg Hess. Please consider supporting our show by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash enter the pocket dimension or find us on YouTube and all socials at enter the pocket dimension.